On the 15th of November 1976, a US Navy ship was on an operation in the Pacific and had deployed its sea anchor, a type of anchor that simply slows down the ship through drag and doesn't reach the seabed, usually being deployed during a storm or tough weather. When the crew pulled the sea anchor out of the water, they found that something had been tangled in the line, not an unheard of occurrence, but this was different. It was massive, bigger than a male great white, and at its head was a very peculiar looking but very large mouth. And so, in typical imaginative fashion from those who name animals, it was called the Megamouth Shark. While the gaping jaw of this creature may be alarming at first, you'll soon notice that it doesn't quite have the same terrifying teeth of the Great White, looking rather toothless. That's because this massive shark is a filter feeder shark. Filter feeders are among the largest creatures in the ocean. Indeed, the two largest fish in the ocean, the whale shark and the basking shark, are both filter feeders. Filter feeder sharks feed on tiny particles and extremely small organisms that float around in the water, mostly plankton. Plankton are themselves tiny, even sometimes microscopic organisms that just float around. They're not really big or strong enough to decide where to go themselves, so are normally pulled along with the current. Filter feeders find these swarms of plankton that have been gathered up by the current, take a big gulp of seawater containing plankton, and then push the water out of them, leaving the plankton behind to be consumed. That's why filter feeders, like the Megamouth shark, have such large gaping mouths, to take in as much food-filled water as possible. Despite its massive size compared to many sharks, the Megamouth shark is actually the smallest of the three filter feeder sharks. As you can imagine, given it was only found in 1976, it's an exceedingly rare species of shark. Not even a hundred have been caught or observed since the US Navy ship accidentally brought it on board half a century ago. Surprisingly, when they are found, it's not terribly uncommon for them to be found near or at the surface of the ocean, which only adds to the mystery of how it went unnoticed for so long, and why they're still such a rare sight today. Despite this rarity, the Megamouth isn't considered endangered, as there's so little information known about the shark and little to suggest that there's a risk of it going extinct. In 1990, a Megamouth was caught, tagged and then released back into the ocean to monitor its behaviour. It was found that during the day, the shark operated at a depth of up to 160 metres, or 520 feet, but at night, the shark would swim up to near surface levels. This is neither a rarity nor a great surprise, as this follows the movement of plankton during the day-night cycle, and many animals that feed on plankton follow this same routine. Another interesting feature of the Megamouth is a small luminous strip inside its famously large mouth. While this is often attributed as being a lure for plankton, others have theorised that it could be means of Megamouth sharks recognising each other. Both of these theories, however, are just theories and neither have been remotely proven. Where the Megamouth lives is another partial mystery, as they've been sighted all over the world, from Australia to the west coast of the US, from Japan to South Africa, although the most specimens have been found in the waters around Japan and the Philippines. This doesn't necessarily mean this is where they most commonly reside, however, as these areas are known for more widespread shark fishing. Even though it is a large fish, the Megamouth shark is actually a very slow swimmer, considerably slower than the other filter feeder sharks, with an average swimming speed of around 1 mile an hour. To put that into perspective with the other filter feeder sharks, whale sharks swim at around 3 mile an hour, as do basking sharks usually, but they have been known to swim up to 10 miles an hour. The Megamouth certainly isn't fast, but it's faster than the plankton that it's got to eat, and indeed jellyfish, which it has also been known to feed upon. Despite its rarity, the Megamouth shark has actually allowed researchers to make a very important discovery about the history of shark evolution, particularly the evolution of filter feeding. In 2018, a study was published which looked at the basking shark and Megamouth shark, and whether or not they evolved filter feeding separately. While the two sharks come from the same order, lamniforms, the evolutionary origin of filter feeding could have come before or after the basking shark and Megamouth ancestors diverged. The study concluded that it was very likely that the basking shark and the Megamouth evolved their filter feeding capabilities separately, so filter feeding convergently evolved with these two animals. Interestingly, the study also suggested that the convergent evolution in relation to tooth morphology is still going on within these two lineages, meaning that more recent samples of tooth shape 
are more similar to one another than that of their ancestors and will continue to evolve closer together. That's it for today's episode of Shark Week. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Megamouth Shark and I hope you're enjoying Shark Week. Also be sure to subscribe to Ben's mum's channel, One World. She's just done a video on the threats faced by scalloped hammerhead sharks in the Galapagos as part of Shark Week. Anyway, only two more videos to go now for Shark Week, including a very special hunt for a prehistoric shark. <laughs>